This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, welcome. It's time for the Ramble with me. I'm Alex Bennett. Larry Bubbles Brown was supposed to have a hernia operation, didn't have the hernia operation because they never called him to tell him when the hernia operation was, so he never showed up for the hernia operation that he was supposed to have because he didn't know when he was supposed to. Does that explain it, kind of? That's it, yes. So That's here it. I lie in pain. But, uh, yeah. Being, yeah. A, being a trooper, I'll do your show. Yeah. I have a hernia. I have a rather large one. Uh, I mean, so large that my urologist, when I saw him last time, said, oh, you know, you have a hernia. I said, yeah. I said, you also noticed I had hemorrhoids, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it's it's big enough that other people saw it, but it wasn't terrible, you know, so... But that uh, a larger one is actually uh, better because the smaller ones are the ones that tend to strangulate. So. Because it doesn't pop out. You but can't get it back into the hole, no. You yeah. can't get. Yeah, I can get mine back in when I'm lying right. down. Right. You know. So it doesn't hurt. You know, it, it did hurt for a while as it was starting to protrude, but then it was okay. So I haven't been in pain for a couple of years now from it. So yeah, you're fine. Yeah, well, I mean, that's all I've got. You know, I've got the esophageal cancer, I'm you got sure. The esophageal. And I've got, if it's not esophageal cancer, then it's throat cancer. And if it's not throat cancer, then it's COPD. And if it's not C, well, anyway, that's the kind of wonderful hypochondriac I am. Where on my tombstone it will read, I told you I was sick. Have you ever noticed, I just heard this recently, and it, it, since I was a kid, every year on radio you would hear a story about some universe or something that has something that is going to end all cancers. And, it, and, and a year goes by, you never hear about it again, and somebody else has a new one that's going to kill all cancers. Well, the trouble it is, never happens. The, the trouble is that all cancers are not the same. I mean, I had prostate cancer, and I had it late on in life, and, and when you get it late on in life, if they catch it early enough, and I got checked all the time, if they catch it early enough, you're going to be fine. You know, yeah. I knock on wood, I, you know, so far I'm fine. And, you know, so when people say, oh, you had cancer, you know, I get, I'm a cancer survivor. I just tell them, shut the fuck up, you know. And, uh, there are other people who have worse things uh, than I've got. You, know? you don't want uh, pancreatic or lung. You don't want pancreatic or lung, uh, or you said in the last episode, uh, uh, esophageal. Yeah, that's a, just a bad one. You can, no. you can survive that, but it's just uh, our friend who died of that, Fred Reese, they had to reconstruct a new esophagus out of his stomach material, it just, and it was just a very painful, horrible thing to go through. Oh, wow, and they still died of it. Until died of it, yeah. Yeah. How how many years was that going on? I think he had that. He was fucking with that for about three years, I think. Okay, so I know I have at least three years to live. You got okay. yeah, you got three years. <laughs> Easily three years left. Do you find yourself reading the obituaries? I do because I still get the paper, uh, and I. Well, you can't. You Mercury can't. You has can't. a nice obituary section. Yeah, but you can't get it online. Because you really to, for you to go online, it takes forever. In, in fact, does, in fact, if you went to download the obituaries, by the time it had been finished downloading on your computer, more people would have died. More would have so, died. Yeah. Yes. So. Anyway, so but you. I do, I do read the paper, and I do, it's. Uh, I always look for. Uh, I see this more and more. You always find people that died that were younger than you. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, and sometimes they, you know, I find that comedians usually die older, you know? You uh, would think it would be just the opposite. Well, I think there's a reason for that. I've always argued that there's a reason for that because a person who is uh, a comedian is constantly working, or hopefully is constantly working somewhere, uh, and uh, that constantly working kind of keeps you alive, you know? I, when I was when I was 
let go by Sirius XM, I thought to myself, well, this is the road to death now. You know, because I don't have to go in every day and do this. I don't have this regular thing I do. And uh, it's going to be deadly for me. But I, I then started the thing on the Internet and so on. And I think that's kind of helped to keep me alive. You got yeah. You got to do so. A shocking number of people die like two years after they retire from their jobs. Yes. Well, I mean, because they don't have. When you had your job, you know, you got up in the morning and you had your toast and your coffee and you got in the car and you drove to work and you did your job and then you came home. No matter how dull that job was, it wasn't killing you. It was keeping you alive because it was giving you a purpose. You know. So, anyway. Um, oh, yeah, there always used to be a thing by people always used to say, man, I would love to retire and just sit on the beach all day. And to me, even as a kid, that's how, my God, that sounds so boring. <laughs> well, if I could retire and travel the world and have little adventures that way, I think it would keep me alive. I think. Yeah, but a, doing nothing will kill you. You know, I've thought about stopping doing this show because we don't have that many people listening to it. Why am I doing it? And uh, why am I wasting Bubs's time? You know? <laughs> And uh, I just keep doing it because it's keeping me alive, you know, it, 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 even if there's a small audience out there. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's strange, though. I, I go out every now and then. Marjorie says, oh, let's go out and make one of our videos. What that means is we go out to the park and we sit there and we do a little five minute show. And all of a sudden I go back to look at it. And it's got a thousand people that watched it. And I'm going, what am I doing right there? But what am I doing wrong the rest <laughs> of the time? And then I finally decided they like my wife. I've decided she's really the star of the show. Oh, okay. So I should use her more often. But I just, uh, let me let me look at it here. Here's you got to do that more. The latest one, which is really strange, the latest one that I did uh, I did uh, out in the park, and my phone would not turn around, right? So the whole thing is sideways on the screen. And somehow, sideways on the screen has gotten so far... Uh, let me see here. Let me make sure that's the right amount. Uh, a 399 views. And we did it yesterday. Um... um so anyway, um, and, and then I did one. I made it right side up. I finally did it right side up. Now, what did I say it was 322, did I say? 399. 399. Okay, the one that is set around oh, no, right. No, that doesn't work. Oh, there's me. Wait Can't turn your There we go. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to do <laughs> Okay, oh, stop well, we had a little trouble signing stop up. it here. Only 72 views on the one that's right side up. <laughs> it's corrected. I'm amazed by that, you know. Uh, so those are it's my uh, my stuff for today. And over on YouTube, it has uh, uh, only 81 views. But the other one, you know. So uh, in other words, I'm over. I'm over like 500 so far. And that was just yesterday, less about 24 hours ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you can start making money when you get five thousand views. Oh no, I I have five thousand. When you get no, when you how when you get five thousand views, I start, I make money. I made uh, that two hundred dollars last year. Huh? That's good. You, you want Better something? Nothing. You, you want? I should send you a check. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, no, it, it what happens? You have to have over a thousand viewers before you can monetize it. So I got a thousand subscribers, rather, and I got like a thousand subscribers, and I monetized it, and so I make money on it, but not much. But if you get a million viewers, uh, they'll pay you four thousand dollars. So when you see somebody who has like sixteen million views, they made a lot of money out of that one video. Jesus. There's this girl, this Ukrainian girl, who plays the violin. She's like a, you know, out in the street. She's a, a busker, if you could call her. And um, she's like 15 now. And she'll get, you know, three, four million 
on one on one video. Well, if you get four million, that's that's twenty thousand dollars right there. Jesus, you know. So she, all of them taken in together, I think she's probably made herself many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I hear these stories about people that make a fortune on YouTube. I don't know. Well, that's the reason why you see the networks running. Like, why do they put Jimmy Fallon up on YouTube? Well, they put him up on YouTube because they're going to make money off of that. If that gets a million views, they'll get four thousand dollars. It's more uh, money in addition to the advertising they made. You know, so a lot of people do that, and um, they have to. I just saw he gets he barely gets a million viewers on uh, the who, TV show. Who? Fal yeah, Fallon. I think it's more than that. I think it is more than that, but. Uh, NBC said they regretted re-signing. <laughs> uh, uh, did they really? I didn't see yeah, that. I thought that was very rude. <laughs> they regretted re-signing him. <laughs> well, you know, all that network television is going the way of the dodo anyway. Yeah, the, and the late night talk show has been dead for years anyway. But uh, and TV, like you said, TV is dying. So yeah. Let me ask you, 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 last time we were talking, we, we ended kind of quickly with Elvis Presley and his manager getting 50% of everything he made. Yeah. And, and I know where he probably spent it because Tom Parker, his manager, was a gambler. He had a huge gambling problem, yeah. That's why he, that's why he settled on getting Elvis that gig in Vegas. And so he could have money to pay off his gambling debts. Yeah, and so he could keep gambling. You know, they're addicts. <laughs> well, the idea of going to Vegas was not a bad idea. No, he, uh, he, I think he sold out 800 shows in a row there. Yeah, so, I mean, that that was a pretty good bet. Yeah, it was great. But by the end, he was like working, you know, the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in uh, Dothan, Alabama. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know that he actually played that, but I'm giving that as kind of a bad example what was going on so you know i mean he uh he at the very end his last concert you know his about his last concert they broadcast live on cbs or not live but broadcast on cbs and since then that concert has not been made available because that's the one where he's extremely fat sweating while he's playing the piano who sweats when they play the piano all right they're having to mop him off. And uh, I think he had, I'm, I'm sure by that time he had a colostomy bag on stage. Which is great, because if you have to take a shit, you don't have to, you know, say, excuse <laughs> me, folks, but I'll be back in a moment. Um, but uh, I, I almost imagine that when he was singing, he goes, love me tender, oh, love me. He was taking a dump, you know. Um, it's just amazing. But here's my, well, big, here's my big question to you. Do you ever like Elvis? I was never. Uh, my sister was older. She liked Elvis, and I just, uh, uh, I've just heard some things about him that he's actually kind of a nice guy. And uh, I don't know, but he died at forty-two. That's a so he was hugely famous when he was twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. He he had he had more fame than anybody should ever have. Uh, he, and his talent, I don't know, I just, I, I often, I've said this before, I, I don't understand what anybody saw in Elvis. I mean, I understand, if you want to say uh, Sun Records Elvis, that was some pretty good stuff, okay? And the first couple of records he made for RCA when he left uh, Sun was really pretty good, you know? Um, and then he started getting into all the ballad stuff and... Uh, the, he was imitating Elvis is what he was doing. And, right, yeah. And, and and then he'd make movies, and the only songs he'd release are songs he put in the movie, you know, and they were dumb, stupid little uh, songs. Um, Everybody Move Your Head to the Right, Everybody Move Your Head to the Left, or something like that. I can't remember what the name of that song was, but it was stupid songs. Yeah. And the material was horrible. Uh, it, it was actually wor you know, pretty bad compared to him. Uh, and occasionally he'd have a good thing. Um, in the ghetto is not bad, but it's kind of funny hearing a white guy singing that, you know. And uh, I just never, but I never saw why he was so unbelievably 
uh, popular, except that everybody kept saying how popular he was when he wasn't. Well, well I think he was good looking, so women loved him. So that was a big part of it. Yeah, but that's uh, that's that doesn't give you ta the talent it takes to survive. You no. Know? So I often I often wondered why people were enamored by Elvis. I, I I actually I have to say this I suddenly remember this last night I saw him live. Oh wow! At, at the uh, what's the what's the what's the theater in the Civic Center? Um, the war uh, no. It used to be the Bill Gra the Bill Graham Auditorium. But yeah, before that it was called something else. I think it was Civic Center. Civic Auditorium. Center Auditorium. No. Oh. <laughs> he played there. Wow. Yeah, and I went to with a with a girlfriend. It was a big Elvis fan. She wore a skirt that said Elvis on it, uh, and uh, I saw the show. You know, and uh, he, he couldn't tell whether he was any good. There was too much screaming going on. You know, but I I when I was a kid, I went and saw Elvis. This was I was probably still in my late teens. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, too bad you don't have a ticket. Yeah, so I saw Elvis. I saw Frank Sinatra. Who else did I have I seen live? Oh, the Beatles. The Beatles. I was. Uh, we held a, a concert with them. The radio station I was at in Houston, Texas, and as they ran off stage to go to a uh, armored car that was going to take them to the hotel, um, uh, I had my hand on the uh, stairs of the stage, and Ringo stepped on my hand. <laughs> And years later, I, I, when I met up with Ringo, I, I told him this story, and, and he said, oh, sorry. <laughs> you know. um, but so you would know this then. I'd always heard that those Beatle concerts lasted about 20 minutes. They were, I think, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this one was maybe 30, 35 minutes. Wow. But I was watching one the other day. It was from that time. They come out on stage, and all they've got are these wimpy little amps. You know, today people go out on stage, and they've got towers and towers and towers of amplifiers. But then it was just, you know, just like the amplifier you'd play at home. And uh, they, those, that was their amplifiers, and they went out, and they did about 30 minutes, and then that was it. But no, I didn't get to, but I didn't get to host that show. Uh, they gave that to somebody else. Um, uh, I got to uh, introduce the Rolling Stones back then. And they were playing, again, the Houston Coliseum, I think it was. And uh, so I hosted a uh, Rolling Stones show. I'm trying to remember, was it Rolling Stones? Yeah. Because I really wanted to host the Herman's Hermit show. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, I was given, hey, well, you, we can't have you do the, uh, the Beatles because we got so-and-so doing that because he's got some kind of uh, seniority over you, but we're going to give you the Rolling Stones. I'd rather do Herman's Hermits. What possessed me to say that? <laughs> but the, I had to do the Rolling Stones, so reluctantly I did the Rolling Stones. And, uh, uh, did they? I know the Beatles didn't have an opening act, right? Uh, I think they did. As a matter really? of fact, I think it was some rock act. I'm trying to remember who it was now. No, because you couldn't just charge a bunch of people. There wasn't a big ticket price, by the way. It was maybe, you know, I'd say it was under $10 for a ticket price, but that was big in those days. That was a lot of money then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so you couldn't do 30 minutes and not have an opening act that played, you know, 30 or another act, a couple acts that each. Uh, I, I think there were two other acts, and I can't remember who they were. You know, uh, so what the hell? You know, uh, it was it was it was, tr but they were it was it was something to see. It really was something to see. People were screaming, and shouting, and everything, and they just did oh they did their complete set, and then they got in there. It was an armored truck they got into. They got into an armored truck, which then drove them down to uh, the hotel where they got out of their armored truck, and. Uh, I wonder if that was for show, you know. Probably, I just yeah. And probably women found out at the hotel they were staying at and were lurking in the lobby. Yeah, and then there was the show that I uh, I am I didn't MC, the show I produced as a kid. I and a friend of mine we 
we decided we wanted to get into the rock and roll uh, business, you know, the business of rock and roll concerts. And so we went out and did a concert in Petaluma, at the Petaluma, I guess, Civic Center, all these places are Civic Centers at that time. And we rented it out for uh, our concert that we ran with Jerry Lee Lewis. Really? Mm -hmm. I never heard that story. That's great. And I've often told the most embarrassing moment of my life happened at that concert. And what is it, Alex? Well, I'll tell the story for the 87th time, but it's worth telling. I've never heard this. <laughs> I'm backstage. Uh, Jerry is getting ready to go on. I'm standing next to one of his musicians. And uh, I say to him... Um, among other things, we get into a conversation. Among other things, I then say, is it true that Jerry Lee married his 14-year-old cousin? Or maybe 13. 13-year-old cousin? And he looks back at me and says, yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> lovely girl. She's a lovely girl. You have a good show. Lovely girl. Lovely girl. I think it was his, I was going to say his bass player, and then you probably would have said, oh, well, that, that probably was, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis's father-in-law. So that's amazing. You got Jerry, so you made money. I don't know if we made money. We certainly didn't lose money. I don't remember losing money on that gig, but I don't think well, we Well, he was a huge act then, right? I don't think we made a lot because we had to pay him so much. And there was in those days there was only a limited amount you could charge for a ticket. I mean, I know the place was packed. You know, it's this is it's all kind of vague to me. I just kind of remember it. You know, and at my age you look back at something like that and you're looking down a tunnel, and at the very end you're 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 hearing what would be your echo, you know. And this thing goes back that far that I remember I did it. I just and I remember that story. But I remember very little about the rest of it. Yeah. Did he do a good show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was terrific. I, I th Jerry Lee Lewis was always terrific. He was hilarious, right? He'd be <laughs> jumping on the piano. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did the whole bit, you know. This was when he was a, a big hit at that time. He hadn't yet gone into obscurity. In fact, uh, the, a lot of these guys, if you hired them early enough, you'd get them pretty cheap because... They, they suddenly had a hit, but they didn't know how much they could monetize it. So they'd lowball you rather than highball you on it. So anyway, that was that was my adventures in rock promotion, and that was it. That was it for us, you know, because it was a whole night. We made didn't make much money. We made enough to pay him, okay, and enough to maybe take a cab home, and that was it. You know, so it was successful. Yeah. Uh, I would say my, my comedy concerts were more successful over the years. You know, yeah. Those things I made a fortune off of, you know, at that time. And you guys made a fortune off of them, too. So We all know. made money. It was a win-win. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't really produce them. My business manager did. He did all the booking and, the, you know, here's how much we're going to pay you. The booking wasn't difficult because it was using our phone book, you know, our, our friends. like. Call Bubbles, get him on the show. Bob Rubin will get him on the show. Dana Carvey, get him on the show. You know, so. Um, although I never hired Dana Carvey. The only time I ever, well, once at the well, the Circle, Circle Star, Star, yeah, yeah, Circle Star Theater, and that was a that was a that was a great show. And you say that some people look at that as one of the best comedy yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, I heard it was just on fire. So that was right before I think Dana got Saturday Night Live. And yeah. I think, no, he hadn't gotten Saturday Night Live yet. He hadn't gotten it yet, right. no. Right. So you go back and you look at it now, and they go, oh, Dana Carvey, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Actually, you'd think Dana Carvey was the headliner. You know, but no, Bobcat was the headliner. All right. You yeah. know, here's a little <laughs> quick thing about Bobcat. You didn't know, uh, Jimmy Kimmel had his 20th anniversary program. And he was thanking all the people who had done the show, and then he said, and our directors, and he listed Bobcat Goldthwait, because Bobcat was the director of the Jimmy Kimmel show for a year. He, he was, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people don't remember that. Anyway, it looks like we're slowly running out of time. What is it? Yes, oh, yeah. we are. Uh, yes, we are. I'm, I'm looking here. we got about a minute. 
Uh, do you want to sing a medley of your hits? <laughs> I can tell you a little story about Dana Carvey and the Circle Star Theater. Yeah. He worked for the Circle Star Theater as a teenager, and he he would deliver food to the performers, and if there was some hotel or something, he, he'd take some food over once to uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. See, you work a lot with, uh, you work with Dana. Dana yeah, Hager. he doesn't go out that much. He's got a podcast now that's doing very well with David Spade, but uh, yeah. he but, still goes but, out of But still, it's your, you know, you're, you're, you're his opening act when he does. Yeah. Anyway, hey, great. listen, uh, uh, we're, we're through with uh, Dana Carvey's opening act. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't use my name anymore. Just say Dana Carvey's opening act. I'll do that next time we do this, <laughs> and that will be in a week. Thank you so yeah, much, Bubbles. Thanks, Always look forward to this. Bye-bye. Okay. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, thanks, Bubs. Appreciate it, Bubs. Love you, Bubs. Everybody loves the Bubs. I hope that next time we talk to him, uh, he has had his uh, uh, his his uh, hernia taken care of. We've been waiting on that. I think when I first started, wow, about two, three years ago, I think I first heard about his uh, his uh, his hernia. So anyway, that's what we talk about as old folks, you know. How's your hernia doing? Yeah, my hernia is doing fine. Yeah. How's your prostate? Ah, the prostate's shot. You know, flat as a pancake. Anyway, hello. How are you? This is, uh, this is the show that gets absolutely nobody watching it. I've decided uh, the numbers have gotten lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And I keep saying, why do I do this? Why do I do this? Why do I do this? And why I do it is because there are a whole bunch of nice people that call this program that I really enjoy talking to. Uh, here they come right now, folks. They're popping in there. Uh, watching it. And uh, Jeff has his audio up. Huh? Oh, I'm still up there. What? What's she doing over there, Brian? Uh, we were playing some games. Oh, I see. I see. What game were you playing? Uh, first was Arsenal, so we just killing everybody like madmen. Oh, okay, that's a good thing to bring a kid up on. <laughs> hey, the game, the game says for nine plus kids mm -hmm. nine and over. Yeah, she's only seven, and she, she sometimes she beats everybody. They have like maybe fifteen people, and they have scores, you know, and she kills the most. She's better than me for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you Jeff. Oh, Jeff's doing hand signals now. That's great. <laughs> Oh, Jeff is doing hand signals now? Yeah. Jeff, you're okay? Are you okay, Jeff? I'm okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's, see. let's see your picture. There we go. Oh. Yeah. How are you doing, Adrian? How are you doing, Adrian? Fine. Fine. She, she, you know, she can go in the, you know, San Jose's Hammer Theater, you know, big balcony and I know a thousand people and perform in front of everybody, and then she gets on here and she's shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. I, I don't blame her. Uh, uh, people used to say to me, uh, uh, what bothers you most? And I said, getting up in yeah. front of three people. Ah. Because they said, well, gee, you know, you're getting up in front. I said, I used to get up in front of uh, like 8,000 people, 9,000 people at the Frost Amphitheater. Didn't bother me at all. I just walk right out on stage. Hello, folks. How are you doing? Da, 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 da. And then I go out to the uh, Holy City Zoo, which was this really small club, and there'd be only like three people in the front row, and that was it. I panicked. <laughs> just absolutely stage fright. And the reason is, I explain to people, when you've got 8,000, 9,000 people out there, it's not like people it's just this thing see you know? a sea of sea yeah. of people yeah yeah, yeah. How how do you, how do you wait, wait, wait hold on a second she's playing video games and i know about video games okay so oh hey uh we we watched two episodes of your uh last of us yeah she watched it with me oh yeah she watched half of it under the covers but yeah. she watched it <laughs> yeah uh, there's a episode on tonight because oh, really? yeah. they, well, was, they, were supposed to, they were supposed to be on on Sunday, but they're not putting it on Sunday this Sunday because why? 
Super Bowl. Super Bowl, and they don't want to go up against the Super Bowl. But that, you see, that doesn't make sense to me because they're like, uh, you know, you can watch that show anytime. You don't have to yeah. watch it at 9 o'clock when it runs. But they, they somehow want to make sure they get a large audience the first time it runs. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. it, so it, it we, I, we, I, I it was Hmm? But it, the first two we saw were really good. Yeah, we liked it. It's a good show. It's a really yeah. wait till you see the third one. It'll blow you out of the uh, blow your mind because it's so different from what you expect it to be. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Uh, did you watch okay. it, Charlie? You've been watching it, Charlie? I haven't been able to. I've been training umpires, so I haven't been able to. I've been training umpires. Oh, okay. Sounds like you're in some kind of gay profession there. You know, <laughs> training umpires. No, it's a lot of work. They don't okay, can this. you take this? Take my laptop. Yeah, okay, okay. But but when the battery dies, you gotta return it. Here you go. Bye. Bye. Bye bye, Adrian. Nice talking to you. Oh, she's going over. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that was sneaky. <laughs> uh, that was sneaky. That was really sneaky. Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of here, kid. <laughs> Dad's I'm got to hide behind this laptop. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't don't you feel terrible kicking her out of the room? Don't you have don't don't you have a certain feeling of guilt? She'll be back in about twenty minutes because that battery's gonna die fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Old laptop. Old laptop. Oh, okay. So you let her play around with your old laptop? Yeah, I have my work one, but I can't do playing stuff on this. Yeah, no, of course not. You know. but if it's plugged in it's fine but it's just yeah. you know when you take it off yeah. it's a it's a hp the pavilion the mm -hmm. big one touch screen everything and then this my work one's a small one so it's nice. well hello also to josh and hello to jeff and hello to alan and hello to charlie and um uh how are you all tonight are you fine oh fine, fine. good until i heard what phil said about the big balloon what the balloon that went across the country he said how do we know that the Chinese are not spreading some kind of uh, stuff to kill all the crops? They sent the virus here. <laughs> did he say I, that to you? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he said that. He said, how do we know? He didn't say it was happening. He just said, how do we know it wasn't? Well, let's see. If they drop all kinds of seeds to kill the crops in the northern hemisphere, they'll freeze to death. It's snowing up there. Yeah, exactly. Nothing I'm here. I mean, you know, yeah. poor thing, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, I am so sick of two stories. Two stories. N number one story is, of course, the balloon. Okay? Because who gives a rat's ass? You right. know? I mean, really, let's, uh, all these people on TV are going crazy over it. Oh, you're, I think you've got some, there's something there that's making noise. Uh, anyway, um, hmm, it's it's coming back on me. What is that that's coming back on me? Hold on a second. Let me just turn this down for a second. Bring it back up. Yeah, now we don't have any stuff coming back. But anyway, is watching all these people on TV going crazy over the balloon, Okay and allowing Biden to go crazy over the balloon, and allowing the, the uh, I saw Murkowski from Alaska, there's a new one, it just went over Alaska, and she's going, oh, I'm very upset about this. We fired it down, we shot it down. What the hell, yeah, I know, what the hell are you, uh, what, is, what the hell is bothering you about that? It's a, a goddamn balloon. Nothing, you know, nothing, can don't you brought it up, I, I won't bring wait, it up again. Minute. Let's be honest about it, okay? When you, when you want to worry about stuff, worry about high-tech stuff. Worry about the stuff in which they're trying to rig our elections or, or, or turn off the power grid or something like that. Okay, that's a very real thing. But what's low-tech? Well, the lowest tech you can get is a fucking balloon. Am I a right, one, Charlie? A one-man spy well, is probably if I If I had a, a, a chart of high-tech, low-tech, I think balloon would be on the bottom, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. Phil's home, that's probably Phil's home happened. base. Yeah. On the bottom. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding what the craziness is over this whole thing. Um, oh, they're they're spying on it. If, to begin with, what? When does it go from being a weather balloon to a spy balloon? 
okay? Uh, it, it, it started out as we heard, well, maybe it's a weather balloon, yeah. Now it's a spy balloon? Well, what makes it a spy balloon? Well, it sorry, sorry I brought it up because you're going to go on for 10 minutes now about it. No, no, but it, it had that thing. It was hooked to it, you know? Yeah. And that was probably sending back information. About what? Maybe the weather? You know? I mean, who knows? I mean, if they really want to spy on us, they got a, they got a space station, all right, of their very own. And and they can do anything well, with the, Huh? That, that's not what it was for. Well, I mean, that's the what I tried to tell people last week is... What can you get from a balloon at 60,000 feet that you cannot get from a satellite? You know what the answer is? Cellular exactly calls. what it was for. Signals intelligence. Absolutely. You do not get signals calls. intelligence from a satellite. You do get signals intelligence from low and high frequency transmitters from a balloon at 50,000 feet. The yep. same reason they try to park submarines and Navy ships offshore to pick up signals intelligence through cables and over the air transmission yeah, what, what, what could they possibly get in this case that that isn't already available that they can pick they can get any communication that they can pick up from any number of military bases or military uh military <clears throat> installations across the united states that send or receive encrypted messages and do you know what happens to reside in most of the plain states yeah. Intercontinental missiles. ballistic missiles. Yes, but yeah. on the yeah. other hand, you're assuming. See, you're, you're kind of buying the military's answer to this whole thing, but you're 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 assuming that they had control over this balloon. And the fact is, a balloon has to follow the trade winds. A balloon is not can't be controlled. Once it's up there, it goes wherever it's going to go, depending on the winds. So mm -hmm. how, how could they possibly say, well, we want to go over the Midwest so that we can get all these signals from these various things, you know, and so forth. I mean, there are other ways. They don't they have to be directly over them to get signals intelligence. I mean, the trade winds are not that hard to predict. The path is not necessarily that hard to predict. I mean, if you have a decent meteorology understanding, which, you know, the world does, you know, now, they can fairly decently predict the path. And the other thing, too, is it doesn't have it's not a CB radio. It doesn't have to be within 500 yards of whatever it is to communicate. It, it, it can be 500 miles, but it can't do it from China and it can't do it, you know, from, you know, Siberia. It, I mean, it has to be, you know, decently. And the other but, thing is, but, is but still, I mean, I think we're making too big a deal out of it. OK, to begin with. If there was information, right, the information was already disseminated back to China by the time that thing was shot down, because that thing was shot right. down over, uh, when it got to the other coast. So it went over right. the entire country without being shot right. down. Secondly, I love these Republicans are yelling and screaming that Biden didn't take decisive action. There were three right. other balloons we know of during the Trump mm -hmm. administration. They yeah, never did anything of, about it. The reason that this one became such a big deal is because I assume it had some sort of malfunction that brought it low enough uh, that people could see uh, it. Okay? I'll tell you the reason. You're close to it. But the reason is, is that we finally had somebody who said, what is this big thing up in the air that we just took a photograph of? Right? And then yeah. it was on well, all the TV networks. And all of a sudden, it became an issue of what this big right. round thing was. Up so there. They, they had to deal with it. But... That, in some ways, is unfortunate and a mistake because they've already admitted that they knew about the crossing of several others that they didn't do anything about. Mm -hmm. So everybody says, well, why didn't you do anything about it? Well, and Spycraft 101 says, if I know that you're spying on me, but you don't know that I know that you're spying on me, what do I do? Yeah. I let you keep spying, and I make you think that I don't know, and then I feed you misinformation. Exactly. So perhaps they let the other three cross and fed them misinformation, and there was no need to tell anyone about it. And then this one came across, and they were probably doing the same thing. And and the TV, secret, and, and which the, no one will ever admit. Yeah. And then someone said, "What's that thing?" And then the Pentagon said, "Well, great, thanks a lot, asshole." <laughs> there goes our fucking misinformation campaign, and now we have to make a big deal about it. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the best thing that could ever happen 
And for you to be spied on, for you to figure out that you're being spied on, yep. them to never know that you figured out you're being spied on, and then, bam, you own them. That's just okay, like, but let me ask we you have this. an Enigma yeah. machine and the Germans don't know it? Awesome. We are going to win the Battle of the Atlantic now, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you don't shoot down your Enigma machine. Yeah. Um, well, it's just the way that it is. I know. I know. I mean, but... the only, I mean, if you knew that you were being spied on by this thing with signals intelligence, and they didn't know that you figured it out, mm -hmm. that is reason for celebration at the NSA, the CIA, the DOD. I mean, they probably had a party. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. And I mean, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden, somebody happens to come across it, and they're like, well, now it's ruined. You know? Yeah, you send up signals of like, uh, oh, I know, Britney Spears' latest breakdown. Well, I mean, they could yeah. send them maybe, maybe the signals. Any number of things is why you're getting uh, sugar versus sugar-free cough drops. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Chinese I'm just, is interfering with your order. I'm just saying, I, I think I'm not right advocating either on. way. I mean, I'm not advocating either way. I'm just saying that in war, intelligence is always the key. Yeah, the but, allies but, won but, World but nevertheless, War II. Nevertheless, I mean, how can you call something a spy balloon when you can see the balloon? I mean, come well, on. It's not a spy. Because you can see it because something happened. Well, it, it, what happened was it. what happened was somebody took a photograph of it, and then the, the news yeah. networks went apoplectic and thought it was a big right. story. Right. But right. no one saw the other three. No. 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 But uh, how, uh, how? And, and they're, they're apparently undetectable by radar. So that's... Well, this one was also yeah. at what something like five, uh, twenty-five thousand feet or something, and they no, were sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Well, supposed to be. They had to. They had to shoot it. They had to shoot it down because an airplane might hit it. Now wait a minute. It's a balloon. I mean, if an airplane hit it, one of two things would happen. It would pop and explode. Okay, or it would be bumped out of the way. You know, I mean, but everybody is creating these scenarios which are just incredibly ridiculous. Well, I don't, I don't think that if, uh, if an airplane ran into it, that's the only thing that could happen. I mean, oh. an airplane, an airplane once sucked a goose through the engine and had to land in the Hudson River. Exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean but that I, was I, I'm, I'm just saying that it wasn't here to take photographs it was here for signals intelligence with they which they cannot get from a low orbit satellite that's right i knew that as soon as they mm -hmm. said that it was a i mean i didn't need the pentagon to tell me that i knew that last week because yeah. signals intelligence is what it's the only thing anyone cares about yeah i mean it is still a low-tech way of gaining an advantage and for anyone who doesn't think so well how did we go up and take a look at it with a U-2 spy plane, which, by the way, we've been using since the 1950s. Yeah. I mean... I think Josh is you know, spot on. I, I believe what, what he's I mean, saying. We, we still, to this day, fly U-2 reconnaissance flights. Oh, that I believe, too. Undetectable. Well, I know we do. It's The Pentagon doesn't deny yeah, it. You can go to absolutely. YouTube and watch a DOD video no, I'm, I'm where saying they show right. you how they land and take yeah, off. But, but, you know, things I mean, like, minute, but, but things like... Wait a minute. But things today. like the U-2, things like the uh, stealth bomber... And so on, are all have all been created to kind of evade radar, and to yep. to prevent themselves from being seen. There was nothing that prevented this thing from being seen outside of it being higher up in the air than you can notice it. You know, right? But uh, right, but this one malfunctioned. That's what I'm saying. Is it came to a lower altitude because of some sort of probably some sort of malfunction. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't supposed to. It was supposed to go over like the last three or four or ten or who knows how many did and then do its deal. But this one had a an accident and, you know, got discovered. I think the Chinese well, like I said, I'm, I'm top secretly. I'm sure no one's happy about that. I mean, the best thing that could have happened is if. No one had ever found out, and they let it. Well, keep wasn't going. wasn't wasn't Biden kind of embarrassed into having to shoot this thing down? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, by the time yeah. we shot it down, it had done whatever damage it was going to do. So far, yeah, as by spying, then, you know. But then again, as as I'm sure, you know, as soon as it was spotted, uh, well, well, like I said, it, that doesn't matter anyway because they already knew 
that they were passing over anyway, which means they already had a way to track them, which means yeah. they either shut communications off or because that would look suspicious, mm -hmm. they generated a lot of communication that was meant for misinformation or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Japanese would do this. They made the mistake a few times of shutting their communications in the Pacific off a couple of times. And that in itself mm -hmm. was something that's going to happen. They stopped communicating, you know. Right. I mean, you know, so, I mean, then they finally learned that they had to keep communicating with, you know, crap, predetermined garbage, mm -hmm. because their lack of communication was in itself a clue that they were about to make some kind of move. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I don't, like I said, I'm not advocating either way. I just know that since the advent of war, intelligence has been the number one factor mm -hmm. in you know, who has an advantage, not necessarily who wins, because that can be changed, but who can have an advantage. Mm -hmm. And since the invention of communication that can take place other than, you know, here's this piece of paper, I need you to ride your horse over and give it to someone, you know, since that changed and it went over the air, signals intelligence is every. I mean, this country's spends hundreds of billions of dollars a year on it and it should because it's the only when a when the when a war comes it's the only thing that you have you know to go off of unless you have on the ground spies which i'm sure we do but i mean they can only give you what they can see you know right there you know in front or what they can get their hands on or whatever yeah but i mean they're going online and they're getting stuff and they're interrupting well, our power course. grids yes. and they're doing a lot Absolutely. of things like that without having to have a, a, a balloon to do it with in fact you're not the, if you were to say what is a covert operation i think a balloon is the least covert you know because you can see it well, we apparently, I'm sure, did discover them at some point, and I'm sure tried to use them, like I said, to our fed, advantage. Fed I mean, misinformation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I can't say that for sure, but I'm assuming that's what they did. Uh, let me go to Jeff first. Yeah, Jeff. I, I'm curious about all kinds of things. Like, how? what's the size of this thing? How does it be organized to manipulate in the presidents of... Uh, the United States, where it came from, where it's going. And and the other thing is, they obviously communicate information back to China. So how do they do that? And how come we don't seem to pick one up and take it home and disassemble it and find out what's going on here? Yeah, I think that uh, part, of, part of the thing is that we shot it down and we so shot it down that we obliterated it rather than, you know, puncturing maybe with a needle a hole in it and letting it come down, you know. And then we had the whole thing intact and then we could do something with it. But instead, we decided to use a $600,000 missile to kill a $10,000 balloon, okay? Um, yes, uh, Alan? Sorry I brought that up, but... Uh... Our former president has turned over a laptop and more confidential stuff. Wait a minute, you're changing uh, the topic. Like, yeah, I, uh, of I, course I, I am. You asked me to do that early. You said, let's stop talking about the balloon. No, I didn't. No, I, for no, I, did, no I didn't. I never said, let's stop talking about the balloon. Why, you said, why want, you In fact, tonight it? I was planning on doing nothing but talking about the balloon. Oh, okay. All balloons all night. All balloon all the time. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. Uh, I mean, and then, uh, <laughs> Brian. Where, where, did they, Brian. where did they, like, initially see this? <clears throat> and why didn't they see this when it's coming over? I mean, was it, maybe it was nighttime or something. I mean, why did it take so long to see this, too? I think it was over Montana. When... It was over Montana, you know, and now they, they have now a perfect count of how many sheep are down there. And then yeah, but uh, in Montana is the middle of the U.S., mm -hmm, right? So mm -hmm. why didn't they see this, you know, beforehand? Unless yeah. it was nighttime, I don't know. Walmart batteries died, and the thing <laughs> sunk, you know, fifty thousand feet. Well, I, don't, I mean, it depends what you mean when you say they. I mean, the well, government we, knew it was. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, they is people on the ground. 
I mean, uh -huh. the government knew that it was there the entire time. I mean, that's what I'm saying is when someone finally got word that someone on the ground had spotted it, I'm sure that at the end of the phone conversation, they broke the phone and said, thanks a lot, you know? Mm. Really appreciate you fucking up one of the greatest <laughs> counterintelligence operations we've had <laughs> uh, against our number one adversary. Thanks, man. Appreciate mm. it. Yeah. Got it. Plus, you didn't get to see the other side of the balloon. It said Gunge Fat Choi on it. it like, <laughs> we should have known it was Chinese. Well, the other story that the press seems to just be going batshit over, and I get tired of this one too, because they know nothing of what they speak, is AI. Oh, yeah, that program. They're going nuts with AI, okay? Oh, AI this, AI that, uh, here's the AI, AI, AI uh, intelligence gap. Uh, it's uh, um, Microsoft versus Google, and this could completely ruin our lives. Let me, let me show you how it can ruin your life, okay? Yesterday I put in, give me a 500 word essay. Oh, you did it? Yeah, on Alex Bennett, okay? Oh, and, let's see what he got. Alex Bennett is a well-known radio personality who has been entertaining and informing audiences for many years. He began his radio career in the 1970s. Wrong. That's wrong. wrong. Yeah, in the 60s, yeah. 60s? Try 50s. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, they were Quickly establishing himself as a talented and versatile broadcaster. Over Not talented. Not talented. They're, they're wrong, wrong there. there, yes. Right. Not first they're, wrong there. they're wrong there. <laughs> Over the years, he's worked at various radio stations, both in the United States and abroad. He went uh, overseas? Oh, many broads. Many and, broads. And built a loyal following of listeners who appreciate his unique style and insightful commentary. Okay. Bennett is known for his quick wit, humor, and ability to connect with his audience. He is equally at home discussing serious political issues and lighthearted pop culture topics, and is always willing to tackle difficult, controversial topics with intelligence and insight. Intelligence, incorrect. <laughs> whether he is conducting <laughs> interviews, <laughs> whether he is conducting interviews with high-profile guests, uh, leading spirited what? debates or simply chatting with listeners, Bennett is always engaging and entertaining. Any, Again, any, not entertaining. Of course. In addition, <laughs> shut up, Brian. <laughs> in addition to his work in radio, Bennett has made a name for himself as a television personality and a writer. He has appeared on numerous television programs and has written articles and columns for a number of publications. He is also active on social media where he continues to engage with his fans and followers. Throughout his career, Bennett has received numerous awards and accolades for his work in radio and the media. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in the radio industry. Oh, there's a, there's a, 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 a didn't even mention the sports Emmy. Didn't yeah. even, yeah, right. <laughs> Despite his many accomplishments, Bennett remains humble. Oh. And dedicated oh, to his and dedicated to his craft, always striving to improve and evolve as a broadcaster. In conclusion, Alex Bennett is a talented and dedicated radio personality who's made a lasting impact on the industry and the lives of millions of listeners. <coughs> his unique style, humor, and insightful commentary have made him a beloved and respected figure in the world of radio, and he will undoubtedly continue to captivate and entertain audiences for many years to come. I'm fucking 83 years old. How much longer <laughs> have I got? Uh, uh, it, th does that, it, it's it, not ageist, though, at least the AI. Well, no, uh, what happened was I put in, I had done it before, and I probably should have read one of those instead because it was even more wrong, but I said broadcaster Alex Bennett. So that I could identify myself. So immediately knew, knew to hone in on that stuff. Is that an accurate or inaccurate article? Or is it just something that's trying to, can I say this, suck my dick? That was very generic. That's what Brian said. Huh? Very generic. Very generic. Yeah, very yeah. generic. Yeah. yeah, so how effective is AI? 
You know, I mean, and they act like AI hasn't existed up until now. How long's AI been around, Charlie? You know this sort of thing. Oh, it's been around 20, 25 years. Yeah, yeah. They were working on it when I was still working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so you've got something to write a term paper, but all the facts are gonna be wrong, so the person isn't going to get an A on that term paper. You know, and now they have AI that's gonna figure out if the term paper was written by AI. <laughs> Check it yeah. out. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're working on it right now, as somebody was saying on television the other night. Yeah. So anytime somebody writes something with AI, immediately we can know it's been done with AI. I mean, what we get are all these people on TV and radio yelling and screaming about AI and they don't know the first thing about it. They don't know what AI is, they just know it's a term and that if you put in some stuff, it'll write an article for you, you know, so. Yeah. I, what I did, I, I actually, I, years ago, I had this idea that I wanted to start a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a uh, uh, comedy club. And I was gonna call it the Exploding Hamster. And the reason I was going to call it the Exploding Hamster is it's the punchline to a joke, basically, about um, how do you, when, uh, how do you, when you're, when, when, uh, when you're having sex with a hamster, why do you put duct tape around it so it won't explode? That was the, the joke, okay? And I figured calling a club the Exploding Hamster would be a great name. So I threw in Exploding Hamster into one of these AI programs that will give you a, any kind of piece of art you tell it to give you. And I said Exploding Hamster, and it gave me a very cute Exploding Hamster. That, 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 that was pretty nice, you know. But people are getting too crazy over this thing, you know. And if, if in fact somebody uses AI to write an article and then they've got to fact check it to make sure it's correct before they turn it in for a term paper or whatever, then they're going to go through a process of learning anyway. Am I wrong, Charlie? You're the you're the guy who's been the you gotten all your smarts in schooling and stuff like that. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? I mean, if you wrote something like this, you would then start proofreading it to see if the, th yeah, the facts yeah. are correct before you hand it in. You know. Yep. It's important you get somebody else to take a look at it. Yeah. 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 So I mean, proofreading. Proofreading, yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't mind something like that to to have a template, like say I want to write uh, an article about uh, GabNet, and it somehow can find out how to best talk about what GabNet is, uh, and then I look at it, and then I start uh, correcting it and proofreading it, and you know, changing sentences and doing stuff like that, and using it as a template. But you know, it, it, according to these people. AI is going to be the end of the world as we know it. So, you know. They're worried about Skynet. Yeah, yeah. well, it, 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 you know, you, you've got, uh, Microsoft says uh, that Bing, see, they, they, they own, they've spent a billion, couple billion dollars buying into this AI company. And they've now put it on Bing so that Bing will now put out stuff using the AI, you know, when you, say you want to find a site about something or another. So they're, they're using it, and the reason why Amazon is now, or rather, not Amazon, Google is working on their own version of the AI thing is so that no, they can't one-up them on the browser thing, on the, you know, yeah. uh, looking for things and so on. So anyway, it's, you know, it's, it, 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 that's another story. They're just, I'm so sick of hearing about it, you know. But, uh, and uh, now, what else is in the news, uh, 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 Alan? Oh, sorry. Uh, the federal government took some more classified documents from Trump and the laptop. Yeah, but they didn't go get, they didn't go get them. They were told they were there and come and get them. Oh, that's to, right. let, let's give Trump some credit. Now, here's what a doctor said to me today. I went to my neurologist for my, you know so I can get my nice happy pills. And um, he, uh, we started talking and I said, so how's, you know, how's the whole thing with uh, COVID? How is it here at the hospital? He said, we had a little spate of it a couple of weeks ago 
And he said, but it's not like it was. He said, you know, the, 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 the shots, the vaccinations changed everything. So that when people do come down with it, it's a mild case. It's not a heavy case. And he said, we kind of, in spite of what anybody would think, we owe that to Donald Trump because of his Operation Warp Speed. Oh, wow. Jeez. And, yes. and, and I said to him, well, how's that so? I mean, I think, wasn't Warp Speed kind of the part of the thing that the NEA, or was it? Not the NEA, but the... Uh, uh, and what, what's the what's the medical FDA FDA uh, was putting into into place? No, uh, the Trump administration came up with the name. Yeah, they came up with the name, but did they really? Do you think they were really responsible for coming up with the vaccine? Of no, not. no, no, the no, no. Technology, no. the mRNA technology was around twenty years ago. But, yeah. but come on, no, no. If the the name is from Trump, whatever. But. Trust me, every company who is doing detection wanted to be the first ones out and make the money. And same thing with the vaccines. Well, I was These companies I was, just didn't sit there and say, oh, well, we're a vaccine company. We're just going to sit on our hands until somebody starts asking us to do something. Well, I was going to go into that with him. I was going to say the thing that was the prime motivator for people to get a, a, a vaccine out there was yeah. uh, was was money. You know, it's the motivation money. of money and profit. But. I will agree that by starting Operation Warp Speed and not putting too many roadblocks in the way of acceptance, maybe got it out there faster than it would have because the FDA, whenever it's time to approve a drug, takes forever. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but same, same when we had Zika and same when we had <clears throat> bird flu, the avian bird flu, mm -hmm. we, we already have agreements with the government for doing the, you know, for research, you know, for, for uh, emergency use only. So for us, it's the same thing that we've been doing for for all these other emergencies that we've had. So I don't know how many roadblocks were in there, really. Yeah, yeah. But so we can't, we can't, we, we, we can't. What? When I was a kid, we got polio problems. Okay. Yeah. And everybody in my school would come downstairs and they'd give you the injection. Or they make you swallow the uh, the uh, sugar cube. Sugar as, cube. As it, as yeah. it came to the that. sugar cube but became you know the what? game Never changer. Asked your parents hmm? about it. They just did it. Was, uh, well, parents weren't running around saying my kid suddenly growing a third arm out of his forehead because he took uh, he took the polio vaccine. They immediately had the kids lining up for the polio vaccine because every parent was terror in terror. That their son or daughter would get polio, you know, uh, and uh, uh, it was a it was a, a, a real thing that the parents had great fear of. Yeah, and, every classroom had at least one kid in it that was on crutches with those leg braces because they had polio. Yeah, or you had to go to a hospital and meet him at the yeah. Iron Lung and or say iron hello. Iron Lung, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yes, uh, yes. I have oh. to go take care of mom. Everybody have a good weekend. Okay, bye. Yeah. Say hello to mom for me. All right. Okay. Good night. This means other people can call if you want to. If you don't want to, eh, you know, <laughs> what the hell? You know, I'm used to nobody watching this anyway. So. But yeah, I mean, I, I think to 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 get attention to it and to have the the name and everything was was good. But I still think that. There was a lot of motivation for companies like ours no, that, no, it, that wanted to do good because we've been doing good. And we, we had assays, you know, we had detection for flu. Mm -hmm. So for us, it wasn't that hard to, to but get But you got to admit, you know, have to admit that part of your motivation was greed. You know, that you, you weren't just doing this because you... No, it, it, it's the thing that we've been waiting for all this time. Yes. But, I mean, you, you didn't start producing all that stuff out of... Uh, out of uh, Public Goodness, service. Of our <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. no, you, you. Of course, we know there's money there, but we already knew that that's that's our that's our. My question you know. is, when we take somebody like Pfizer, Pfizer's pretty much been the major player in all of this. Moderna mm -hmm. uh, is not the major player any longer. The last uh, shot I got, I'd been getting Moderna. The last one I got was Pfizer. Okay. Um, my question is, uh, how much money is Pfizer made out of this? Oh, a shitload. Of you, you know, because the government was buying the shots that they were putting in your arm for free. So, billions, billions yeah. of dollars. 
So it was in Pfizer's best interest to get this thing to market as fast as possible, right? You know, it wasn't like they all of a sudden they saved the world. I mean, I'm glad they came up with it. And, you know, and Pfizer has that little extra thing now, which is Paxlovid, which if you come down with it after you've had your last shot, uh, this will still ward it off for a while. So, you know, what the hell? Anyway, so that's all I got, folks. Thanks. Okay. Any, you got anything, Josh? No, no, what's been going on really, other than the stuff you talked about? Yeah, yeah, you know, not a whole lot really. State of the Union. I, I fell asleep, so I had to miss it. Whoops. Did you fall asleep you during, while you were watching it, or did you yeah. fall asleep? Uh, right before I forgot, um, because I wasn't watching news coverage to you know tell me, and I was watching something else and. Then I fell asleep, and then well, by the time I realized it, it was too late. So, and Josh, when did they start doing State of the Unions like that? Well, they did them the entire time, you know, because it was a constitutional requirement. But I'm not exactly sure. I forget now. It doesn't we, have to be a speech, though, does it? Correct. That's what I was going to say. Was yeah. I don't know when we went to the sort of modern trip to the Capitol, give a speech tradition that we uh, – Observed now, um, initially, they were mostly transmitted in writing. Uh, uh, the mm -hmm. president would basically just write out, not really a speech, but a written transmission of his agenda and, and important points and things like that. And they well, would just Actually, what the, all, all the Constitution requires is that he report to the Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could still yeah. do the same thing. I mean, nowadays he could send an email and take the night off, you know. But well, they use it for political. Well, right. You know, purposes. So not. campaigning, and you know that way, you know, like if you're feeling left out or whatever, you can stand up and be like, "You lie," you know. And then well, you know where they lie, lie in like, every your mom, it, bitch. You know. But, but you know where they lie like in every one of those speeches <laughs> is every time they give a State of the Union, they always say, "And the State of the Union is good." Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Hey, I want one president who's going to say to me, hey, the State of the Union really sucks. That would be funny if the guy got up. We're in deep shit. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, but, but, you know, I mean, the, the State of the Union is kind of not very good right now. It, it's yeah, yeah, complete right. with so good. many problems, include not, not the least of which is this animosity that's going on in the country politically. And didn't Phil's girlfriend yell liar at him right at the State of Union? I mean, come on. What's that lady's name? Yeah. Um, Taylor's name. It was up there yelling. <laughs> yeah, I watched that on a clip. She yelled liar. You're really Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys talked about that or whatever this week, but I mean, I don't really understand that behavior. I mean, what what is the you know, the point, I mean, there's... Well, because she has to maintain her reputation as America's cunt. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing, you know, she that is... Can't be nothing comes from that that's productive, you know. I mean, it's it's just like, it's just sad behavior. I mean, I, I can't understand the amount of disrespect. You know, I mean, Democrats didn't do that with Trump. And I mean, he's the most you know, immoral person that's held the office and, you know, it may probably well, happen. Right? When, so, when it was time for him to give the State of the Union, uh, you know, yes, uh, Charlie's got his hand yeah. up. I just I Googled it. Uh, COVID, I mean, Pfizer took in $37.8 billion in revenue from its COVID vaccine just last year alone. How much? $37 billion? $37.8 billion dollars that 2021 or 2022 that, it's a well one article says 2021 but the other one says 2022 so i don't know well they had costs though right <laughs> yeah, yeah sure 37.8 in <laughs> one year and they've had at least two full years 2021 and 2022 so you figured at least twice that wow <laughs> so, and they're not trading I'm, I'm looking at them in google finance their five-year perspective, they're only up 27.7% for the last five years. That's not that much. If you're thinking about since I had COVID, too, you think they'd be up more. 
Since you had COVID, what do you think? Uh, Pfizer made a fortune because you got COVID? <laughs> well, I would have thought their stock would have been a little better. Because yeah, you got line. COVID. Yeah, I didn't die. Yeah, my, and they killed my mother too, Trump. I can't forget that. Maybe they killed your mother. I told Shaggy that. He kind of agrees finally. <laughs> what? He the... hates Trump. It's funny, Alex. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you got to remember that Trump, uh, the one thing my doctor did yeah. say, because I didn't want to get into him about Trump, I would have been, I is he said, there, but yeah. you have to admit that the, he said, but then Trump turned around and he told everybody you don't have to wear masks. Yeah. And he said he, he, he did something good and then he completely negated it by doing something bad. You That's know. So, you know. It's true. Do you think he'll run Trump? I was just curious. Me and my brother were talking about. Oh, he's going to run. He's already said he's going to. Oh, he's definitely going. to. Oh, I thought maybe he would back off. Then. No. <clears throat> you Are know, you I mean, uh, who knows what's going to happen? I don't think the Republicans have anybody. I think actually, if he ran, if Biden, hmm. if uh, Trump ran against Biden, let's say that's the next matchup, he'd lose again. You know. So. You know. The Republicans would be good to find a young whippersnapper uh, who can go up against Trump and and exercise his youth against Biden's, well, let's say, uh, 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 experience. Who would that be? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that it, if they don't move into some sort of policy, uh, you know, they don't move away from being just about you know, complaining about everything, they're, I don't think they're going to have success. I mean, I base that off a lot of recent experience. They have not had success with that line of thinking for the last four or five election cycles. I mean, if they're going to get on the national stage and get into arguments about, you know, banning a book about Roberto Clemente because it talked about how he faced racism instead of, you know, the economy, okay, go, go, okay. I mean, I think in a debate, I just let the guy talk to him, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because I just don't know that. I mean, people care about that. I mean, I'm sure there are some people who do. You know, that little itty bitty tiny group or whatever. I mean, but that's not that's not who you need to win a general election in in a nationwide. You know election i mean you know that's that's the thing about desantis is i I, some of that stuff is i don't think it's going to ring home with people in a lot of the country Mm -hmm. i mean it might you know i mean and and i'm sure that he might get you know white people in nebraska to shake their head up and down but the fucking people in nebraska are voting for the republican anyway anyway so it's not gaining any electoral votes from that sort of stuff if you ask me I mean, I don't know that working people in the suburbs of, you know, Columbus and Louisville and Philadelphia and places are interested in, you know, Disney World and their tax breaks and all that. I I don't know that that's important to them. I mean, I'm not just saying that because that stuff's not important to me, but I, I just I don't really ever hear people that live anywhere that I okay but let me ask you around let me ask, talk about this and these are Republicans let me you know? ask you this in reality though how bad is the economy well it's really not I mean yeah I know, mean it's but, overall pretty healthy I mean there are some issues there in some sectors you've got you've got you've got you good know, good but, good low unemployment figures okay yeah, right you know, you've got uh, 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 gas prices are down, some food prices are coming down, Yeah. you know, and yet nobody seems to give Biden any credit for this. You know, oh, look at the economy, how terrible it is. Well, it's just because things cost more today than they did yesterday, yeah. and that's always going to happen. Things have always cost more today than they did yesterday. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah, there's definitely issues that they're working through with it, but it's overall in a in a good spot and it's on a positive trend. You know, the signs are pointing toward positivity. Well, also I mean, maybe also not like uh, exuberance, but it's not looking bad. If the economy is having problems, why? COVID? Okay. What control did 
Biden have over COVID? Trump had more control over COVID and he didn't do anything about it. You know, but that really hurt our economy. Mm-hmm. You know, and and prices, uh, actually prices on some things went down. I mean, the price of an apartment here in New York actually went down during that period of time. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, but I mean, they, you know, if I don't know how a DeSantis will act if he were running nationally I, I mean we'll see maybe his tune will change but gosh i would hope that it doesn't i do hope you, he does do go you, try to focus yeah but, nose do, but do you play. think if he ran if he ran that the american public would necessarily warm up to desantis i mean, I mean he's basically a, you know he's a he's a florida phenom okay right that's right yeah i'm not so sure and i mean if they continue to just <clears throat> You know, chase stupidity, you know, like I said, you know, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, saying in a hearing that an elementary school in Illinois got five billion dollars to teach critical race theory. Really, an elementary school got five, but one school got five billion dollars. I mean, that fucking, you know. To begin with, there there isn't a school in the country teaching critical race theory, is there? Well, I mean, it's a college. It's a She just says this, this. $5 Five billion dollars went to one school. But it's a teach. college. It's a college uh, 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 study, isn't it? Graduate school. Graduate study. school. Yeah, right. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, not I mean te- you're not teaching critical race theory in kindergarten. You know. I mean, yeah, it's all nonsense. But I mean, you know, like these numbers and stuff. Like people are just gonna, you know, oh my gosh, you know, why, we can't vote for the Democrats. They might give five billion dollars to our elementary school, like <laughs> you know. I mean, who cares what they gave it? To? I mean, yeah, I I don't know. I don't get it. And I think that over time, that I do think Biden is savvy enough to make the argument for if they want to keep decrying about supporting the war in Ukraine, I think he's savvy enough to make that case over time. You know, in, in, in real debates and in, and in real campaign stops, if they want to keep harping about that, I say go ahead. I mean, I think that he could lay out exactly why it's important to hurt the Russians by proxy. I mean, it's it, that's like, I mean, that's some of the best money we've spent in years, if you ask me, you know, but I'm pretty heavy on defense and intelligence, so maybe it's my bias, but... I well, mean, what, I, thank God we may spend all that money on our uh, on our military because now we have the tanks to send to the Ukraine. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but hey, look! It, at the end of the day, eventually those tanks were designed and envisioned for a coming war with the Russians, mm-hmm. and now they're participating in one. And the fact that well, let's face let's face it. Not any Americans is bonus. What's going on in the Ukraine is a war with Russia by proxy. Right. You know, uh, and we don't want to get in there. We really don't want to get in there, but probably right. we should. You know, why not? Yeah, but, you know, and, and the Republicans want to, you know, continue to cry about that war and where all the money's gone and, and, and we're only there because he's got some business dealings. Good. Keep Keep saying that stuff and let and and I think that he could easily beat back on that and convince people why it's important to be there. And I think that it's gone on long enough now that there's enough evidence that people aren't going to be like, no, we're being lied to. It's Vietnam, Domino theory. I mean, you know, people can see that you know, very seldom, yeah. is serious. As a country, we very seldom do very honorable things anymore. And helping Ukraine is maybe the one honorable thing we've done in the last many, many years. Certainly, uh, Vietnam wasn't a, uh, a, good de- a good deal or us at our very best. Neither was the Korean War. There really hasn't been anything we've fought in, in the last many years since World War II that was justified. This action is a humanitarian action and it's justified and it's the thing we could do and pat ourselves on the back for what we're taking too long though 
Well, of course, it's t- all, all it, these tanks that they're getting right now, they're not going to get them for a few months and they still have to bring people over here to train and then bring them back. I mean, it's just it's just taking too long. It's taking too long. Absolutely. That's why I say we probably should have been in there, you know, if nothing more as advisors or something like that, you know. But I mean, it, it's it, 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 it's to begin with, it's a terrible, horrible war. But who would have thought it would have gone on this long? I would have thought the Russians were going to win it in a day and a half, right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. And they aren't even coming close. They've lost what is it, three hundred thousand men? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe they. Can. He's got a shit army then, really. I don't know how he keeps. Doing. Yeah, I mean, how are they losing that? He actually looks weaker now than ever, really. Oh, well, sure. yeah. How uh, the question is, how can he possibly, you know? You know, one thing that comes out of this, he's no threat to anybody else out of the country, this guy. He can't even overtake them. Well, I think he showed, showed militarily how weak they are. Yeah. You know? It's like, don't even worry about him. He's like, he's he's nothing. But he's the kind of guy that just won't give up, you know? He, I, that's and, another thing, Alex. You think he's that stubborn now that he's that in? Like, he just won't, like, we All can't he win? has to do is come to, the, come to a truce table and sit down and uh, do something that makes it look like he won to his people. You know, it's kind of like what we did in Vietnam. We we lost the war in Vietnam, but we walked out of there saying, well, we got out and it's a victory for us. That's what we said. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, so that's what he's going to do. So okay. just give him some face so he can get out of there. But we don't, give some, you know, we're not man, we're not doing that. I wonder I wonder if this if his own people just oust him and say, listen, we got to get rid of this guy. He's going to kill us. Well, I mean, if they, if military they, they, can, they can try if they don't mind getting shot. Yeah, he, somebody's got to be able to get to this Or guy. poisoned okay. or yeah, whatever. A bunch of oligarchs are falling out of windows. Walk him in the park and just put him out of his misery, really. That's what they should have did to Hitler and they should have did to him. But he's yeah. telling his people that they're winning. You know, he's telling his people out there. I think the, the inner circle have to know, hey, listen, we're losing. Yeah, but they believe he's winning because the news operations in so yeah. Russia are just touting how how successful the war is. Right. Because they have to do that. Otherwise, they'll be shot. They'll be shot. You know, they'll get poisoned. I mean, they got a gun pointed at you. Are we winning or losing? I think we're winning. We're winning. Oh, boy, we're doing great over there. You yeah. never look better. Just think of how we're worried about Trump. Yeah. You know, people going, you know, and trying to step, push him aside. And he's not even like, you know, some murderer like Putin, you know. Just think if you try yeah, to right. you know, that's a good point. push Putin out of the way. Well, <laughs> that's a, that's and he thought terrible. Putin was the greatest I, thing since I, I think Trump is. Point. I think Trump was, if allowed to go on, maybe to, into a second term, was capable of exactly what Putin's doing. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think yeah. he was absolutely capable of that he was infatuated with this guy remember like everything he did was like it was the best because he he loves uh you know people who are 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 uh what's the word i'm looking for uh dictators dictators (laughs) Dictators. yeah he loved the uh, uh, the guy in north korea you know kim Kim jong playing playing checkers with him (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, so you know, I mean, his pal, uh, he he was talking about him like they were, you know, having sex while he was over there. I mean, it was a, it was so odd. Like I thought he was retarded, Trump. Was he that stupid? Uh, what stupid is? I don't know. If stupid is or the ignorant. Way. What do you think? I mean, it is? this doctor of mine said, "Well, Trump isn't stupid," and I thought to myself, and I went, "No, but he's deluded." You oh, know, I so I mean, that. he's not stupid, but he certainly. He's not terribly bright, I don't think. You know, I think Biden is brighter than he is. I think uh, Obama was much brighter than either oh, well, Biden or uh, or. Uh, uh, I miss Obama. Uh, Trump. Yeah, but but Trump and the My Pillow guy, though, that's a genius oh. brain right there. Yeah. put those two together. Yeah, that's a I'll brain. That's brain. a that's a brain trust if I ever saw that one. That is a fucking shit sandwich. I've ever I remember seen. the My Pillow guy was walking out with all these documents, and you could and use it right now. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. like, this is a bizarre world when you're watching it. You get a document, you get a document, you get a yes. document. What am I watching? Here? Anyway, hey, that's it for the week. Oh, it's over with already? That's okay. That's I'll, I'll buy that. Anyway, uh, hey, uh, thanks, uh, Josh. Always appreciate the fact that you come on on Fridays and we get, a, we get some good information from you. 
Charlie, love having you here. You know, it's it's wonderful. Uh, we're gonna see you a lot. Are you uh, are you gonna be? I got one more week, and then I gotta start umpiring again. Oh, you gotta I'll start play. umpiring again. I see. Okay, uh, uh, Brian, thank you so much. Love having you here as always, and your lovely daughter, Adrian. Go Eagles. Okay, go Eagles. Uh, Hotel California. Uh, yeah, right. Jeff, thank you, and thank you, uh, Tony, for being here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. And uh, Jack Bishop is next. He'll have a citizen panel. He'll be taking calls on Skype. If you got Skype, just uh, start it up, and then uh, type into it GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E, and you'll be able to talk to Jack. I'll see you again on Monday at 4 o'clock on Facebook with the uh, um, with our little gathering that we call the uh, pop-up. And then we'll see you again uh, next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>